Please be seated and I invite the choir if they want to go to the front. There will be a video if they wish. I extend a good morning to everyone and to those who are watching across, across the land at home via Zoom or YouTube. I'd like to uh, welcome you. Um, my beloved wife says, I talk too loud. She says, you're too loud. You gotta tone it down. Part of it's because, and those of you, I know some of you are here uh, in the uh, rock and roll or working in the music industry, you can go deaf. So this next story, a little bit of funny story, yeah, I can identify with it because I talk loud because I can hardly hear. So uh, this uh, elderly couple, they were celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary and they were in a swing in front of a restaurant. And the husband turned to his wife on the swing and said, our love is tried and true. She said, what did you say? I said, our love is tried and true. I can't hear you, honey. Speak up. I said, our love is tried and true. Fine. I'm tired of you too. <laughs> Every one of us here, listen closely. Every one of us here has been through something. Every one of us. Some of us, it's been a bad medical report. Some of us going through radiation, chemotherapy. Some of us in palliative care. Some of us have lost their employment, lost their homes, lost a family member, lost children through relationships, marriages break down separation, divorce. We've all been through something. There's not anyone in this congregation who hasn't been through something. We've been tired. We've been hurt. There's no one, I'm sure, that hasn't been disappointed in something or afraid of something or we've lost perspective. We're just going through the motions. We smile when we're just trying to be polite. So I find it difficult to laugh. Our life has lost flavor, lost passion, lost hope. I have some great news for you today. The great news is this, that in the gospel story today, Jesus teaches us and shows us that he's been there. We don't hear the full story of the temptation. Mark's version is very short. It's almost like a Cole's notes of what happened. But in the other synoptic gospels, they speak about the three temptations. Jesus was sent into the wilderness. And in the wilderness, he seeks God. He's led by the Spirit. He's led to the dry places of the desert. We have all had those dry places in our lives. The dry places are the enemy's territory. It's where the enemy lives. It's where Jesus was tested. We go there more than it comes to us. The enemy's test territory is to believe you're not good enough. You didn't deserve that job. You're probably sick because you did something wrong. And the list goes on. The enemy has its hold on us in those dry places. God's territory is positive, hopeful, full of praise. It's a place where the enemy can never catch you. 
It can never touch you. And so in God's territory, we are not to live discouraged. We're to live in faith. For Jesus is on the throne. My mother would say that. Jesus is on the throne. Tomorrow will be a better day. We are in the palm of his hands. The real battleground is not out there. It's here. The battleground is our mind. Jesus confronted the enemy with the word of God. We need to be reminded in the dry places of God's promises to us. I will never abandon you. I will never leave you alone. I am your shield. I am your light. I am your shepherd. Come to me all you are burdened and I will give you rest. And the list goes on. We get out of the dry places when we change the channel. When we change our thinking. The longest journey is not from the womb to the tomb. The longest journey is from this head to this heart. And so we need to change our thinking. We have to be proactive. We can't wait for hope to come to us. Love to come to us. We can't. We have to be live in faith. We have to tell ourselves that God is bigger than our problem. He's bigger than cancer. He's bigger than illness. He's bigger than separation and divorce. He's bigger than financial loss. He is bigger than any problem. And that's why David, when he said to Goliath, he didn't say, oh my God, he's going to kill me. He said, my God is stronger than you. And my God will destroy you. God will make things happen because God has the final say. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 God does have the final say. God will make things happen. And so during Lent, we're invited to be reminding ourselves and to be proactive that Lent is about the springtime of our hearts. Even no matter what comes up against us, God is bigger than this. I lift up to you, Lord, because I... You have got me in the palm of your hand. You have told me, Lord, that you will never abandon me. You have told me you are my shield and my strength. I know you are there for me. God, you have the final say. When we don't see a way, God is making a way. Mother used to say, God is the night shift worker. God is working when we're sleeping. God is working behind the scenes. In St. Paul's book, of uh, St. Paul's uh, lesson, he, think, he say, states the following, I think myself happy. We need to think ourselves out of the dry places. When we're down, when we're depressed, when we're lonely, when we're afraid. We are to fill our minds with good thoughts and there's no room for wrong thoughts. We need, as I said Not to let the dryness get in you. There are some people who have dryness and they're shriveling up. And they need to hear this message loud and clear. We all need to hear it. We need to sow that seed in our time of need. As I said to you many, many weeks ago, that I told you the story of that young lady. She was only 31. She lost her husband. Every time I came back to visit the church, she was dressed in black. She was mourning. She'd always say to me on the way out, She couldn't say it was a lovely day. She always say, oh, I don't know why it happened to me. Why God took my husband. Ten years later, same thing. Still in the black, blaming the world. And I said to her, I finally had enough. I said, you need to sow your seed in your time of need. If you're miserable, go visit the miserable. If you're lonely, visit the lonely. And so what she did, she went to the nursing home. She visited an 82-year-old man who was suffering. And it was the nurse, the male nurse that looked after her that she fell in love with and married five years later. We need to sow our seed in time of need. We have to change the way we think. We cannot say, why me, Lord? Why not me? I am your servant, Lord. I am your helper, Lord. I am yours. Take me out of this dryness. I've often said (laughs) that miserable people love miserable people. Just like addicts like to hang around with addicts. People that have bad 
relationships, I like to hang around other people with bad relationships. Usually, cheerful, positive people like to be with cheerful, positive people. Where we are in our success is because people have been there with us and have lifted us up. Which leads me to the next point. Not only do we have to change the way we think in our dry places, in our desert, in our wilderness, when you're dry, you need to change the people you're living with or sharing your life with or socializing with. Don't gravitate towards the dry people. If you're miserable, don't always hang out with miserable people. Be with those who are going to lift you. Dry places are places where misery loves company. And so I invite you to remember the story taught us today that the Spirit led Jesus into the desert. And the Spirit waited on him through the angels. We are never alone in our dry places. No matter what you're going through right now, you are not alone. And God is walking with you. The Spirit is with you. In the people who hold your hand. In the people who care for you. In the energetic, the positive, the encouraging, the kind, the loving. The people that are beside you in church today is God's presence among us. The beautiful musical, Les Miserables. The last line in the musical, so powerful. To love another person is to see the face of God. My friends, we find God's spirit, God's presence in our dry places, in those who walk with us. Not behind us, not in front of us, but beside us. Think about the people in your life, whether it was your parents, a teacher, a fellow friend, that's either here or gone or moved on, that was Christ's presence to you in your dry places. The person who sat with you in the hospital. The person that held your hand. The person that gave you the encouraging words. The person that drove you home one night and gave you uplifting words. The person you had coffee with that told you everything's going to be okay because God's on the throne. It's people that bring us out of dry places. People who promise will remind us of the promise that God gave to us. And that's why I can say, God, you have given my dreams their wings and now I can fly with you. Fly to a height that I never knew. I can see it in each of your lives. I can feel it in your eyes. Your love true, God, be by my side. Love true. God himself is walking with us, beside us, in dry places. Never underestimate the power of your word, the power of your mouth, the power, the miracle there to lift. Think yourself out of these dry places by praising and loving. Always have a kind word on your lips. Whatever we send up will come down. You're, you're looking at someone who literally has lived my whole life praising God. And God, praise be to God, God saved my life. So I could preach to you the words that I'm saying today. You are not alone. I was at a church recently, and the lead singer sang the song, You are not alone. I am always with you. Tears just came down my cheek. We are not alone. God is with us. Being by someone's side, by loving someone, by living with someone, by caring for someone, you are seeing God's face in the dry places. What God started in my life, he's going to finish. No good thing will he withhold because I walk uprightly. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. Watch God's flow of his abundance, his reign fall upon you if we speak in faith. If we lift him up, we will be lifted. If we give all praise, we will be favored. That's why when I was young, I was always encouraged to be around those that would lift me up. Those that would raise me up. Not put me down, but raise me up. I'm going to now sing this little song that I sent to you last week. 
Um, and I, I want you to remember, when I'm singing this, I'm singing it to God. You gave my dream their wings, now I can fly with you. Fly to a height that I never knew. I can see it in your life, Lord. I can feel it from your eyes in the gift of one another. Your love true, be by my side. You've given my life a song, now I can sing to you. Singing out your love and the gift of you. I can see it in your life, I can feel it from your eyes. Your love true, be by my side. This song is you. This song is me. This song is more than memory. And so the person you go home with today, the person you live with today, the person that calls you today, the person that encourages you today, that is God lifting you up today. That is God loving you today. God has no arms but ours. He has no lips but ours. He has no face but ours. And so we pray, Lord, be by my side. In that spirit, if you know it, you can sing along with me. But this is a song that really speaks about how God can lift us up by people being by our side. You give my dreams their wings now I can fly with you Fly to a height That I never knew I can see it in your life I can feel it from your eyes Your love true Be by my side you gave my life a song now I can sing to you singing out your love and the gift of you I can see it in your life I can feel it from your eyes your love true be by my side this song is you this song is me this song is more than memory Lord fill us with your grace in our dry places in the gift of one another and may we lift each other up by the power of your promise that we'll never be alone. We pray this in Jesus' name. I can see it in your life. I can feel it from your eyes. Your love true. Be by my side. Your love true. Be by my side. May Jesus Christ be praised.